Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, I'm going to show you what the term zero of multiplicity means. I'm also going to show you how to write polynomial equations given some characteristics of polynomials. So let's start with zero of multiplicity. So refer to the graph to the right, which is actually from a previous question in a previous video. You will notice that the x-intercepts, negative 3, negative 2, and 2, it divides the x-axis into four intervals. So these four intervals can be written as they were positive, meaning that they are above the x-axis, or negative, below the x-axis. So if you take a look from negative 3 and then to the left, all of this is going to be positive, as we can see that the graph goes up. From negative 2 to positive 2, the graph is also positive. And then from 2 on to the right, this is also positive. Now from negative 3 to negative 2, this little part here, we can see that the graph dips below the x-axis and the graph, or the y-values, are negative. All right, so our four intervals, we can write them out as x is less than negative 3, from negative 3 to negative 2, from negative 2 to positive 2, and then x is greater than 2. So when x is less than negative 3, the sine of f of x is positive. Same with negative 2 to positive 2, and then 2 and on. But the sign from negative 3 to negative 2, as I said before, is negative. So notice that the sine of f of x changes if the graph crosses from one side of the x-axis to the other side, which is pretty obvious, right? So it goes from sorry, positive to negative and then negative to positive. However, at x equals 2, something interesting happens. The sine of f of x actually stays the same. So why is that? Well, if a polynomial has a factor, let's say the factor is x minus a, and it is repeated n times, then we say that that at x equals a, it has a zero of multiplicity n. So in other words, multiplicity of a zero, meaning of a root of a solution, is the number of times a zero of a polynomial function occurs. So remember the function that we did, this is what it looks like at the very beginning of this section. Um, when we factored this function, we got x plus three times x plus two, and then times x minus two, and there was another x minus two. So it was actually x minus two squared. So you will see that this function has a zero of multiplicity one at x equals negative three. So x plus three, the factor, only occurs once. It also has a zero of multiplicity one at x equals negative two, because the factor x plus two also only occurs once. However, the function has a zero of multiplicity two at x equals two, because x minus 2, that factor occurs twice. And that is why when the graph hits 2, it actually goes back the same way where it came from. So the shape of the graph of a function close to the 0 depends on its multiplicity. So let's take a look at some examples. So you've probably seen some of these graphs before. Okay, so the first one, I'm just going to identify the zeros. So they are here. Okay, so I'm going to do that with every function actually, or with every graph. Okay, so for this first one, we can see that the graph crosses the x axis every single time. So this has, or every zero has a zero of multiplicity 1. 
In the second graph, it also occurs over here, where the graph crosses the x-axis. However, at this point here, this x-intercept has a zero of multiplicity two. So it hits the graph and then it comes back down. So the graph, the y value, actually never changes sign. Now in the next graph, this is actually the graph of y equals x cubed. Now you will see that the sign does change. It goes from negative and then the y value becomes positive. However, notice that at the x-intercept, it's a little bit flatter. So this is a zero of multiplicity three. Okay. The fourth graph is actually the graph of y equals x to the four. And you can see that it looks like a parabola, but it's quite flat on the bottom. So this is a zero of multiplicity four. And then lastly, this last graph, it kind of looks like the cubic graph, but it's actually even flatter than the cubic because this is y equals x to the power of five. And this graph actually has a zero of multiplicity five. Now, it'll be really difficult to differentiate whether it's a four or a six or an eight um, because it'll get they get pretty flat, or whether it's going to be maybe a 5, a 7, or a 9, but you can definitely see the difference between a multiplicity of 3 and 5. So if I erase these dots, you can see that the 5 at the x-intercept is quite a bit flatter um, than the um, cubic function here. So let me just redraw the zeros back in. So for a zero of odd multiplicity, the sign of the function changes. Okay, so it crosses either from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Oh, I forgot to put the number two here. Now for a zero of even multiplicity, so the two and four, we can see that the sign of the function does not change. So here, the y value was negative, it hits the x-intercept, and then it's still negative. For the zero multiplicity four here with x to the four, the y value was positive, it hits the x-axis, but then it goes back up, and the y-value is still positive. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So for this graph um, of the polynomial function, determine these five features. If you want, you can try it on your own first and pause the video. So you can pause the video now, or you can just go right into the solution. All right, the first feature I'm asking you to find is a least possible degree. So we can see that there's two bumps on the graph. So most likely it could be possible uh, the polynomial would be a degree of three. So the least possible is a degree of three. So the sign of the leading coefficients, since the graph goes from the top left to the bottom right, or quadrant two to quadrant four, we know that the sign of the leading coefficient has to be negative. We can see the x-intercepts here of negative two and positive three. And now we need to list the factors of the function of least possible degree. Now, since we can see that the graph is positive, it hits the x-axis and then it's positive again, we know that x plus two probably occurs twice or it does occur twice, okay? And we also have a factor here of x minus three. All right, lastly, the intervals where the function is positive and the intervals where it is negative. So the function is positive when x is less than negative two, okay, so from here on, and then from negative two to positive three, and then the function is negative from three on. So where x is greater than three. 
All right, lastly, let's take a look at how to write polynomial equations. So given the following information, let's write the equation. So we can see we have three zeros, and it also has to pass to the point 342. So the point always will stand for our x and y. Now we see that there are three zeros. So we have y equals x plus 4 as a factor, x minus 1 as a factor, and x minus 2. However, we don't know how much the function has stretched vertically. So we're also going to put an a value in the front. Okay, so we know that our x and y are 3 and 42, so we're going to substitute that into our equation. And what we need to do is we now need to solve for our a. All right, so here we have 7 times 2 times 1. So that's going to be 14 and a. So a in this case is 3 when we divide both sides by 14. So therefore, our equation is y equals 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. And I've asked you here to leave um, your equation in factored form. So we can just leave it like this and we don't have to multiply it out. All right, let's try another one. So told you that it's a cubic equation with a double root three, and it's passing through the point to negative 16. So remember that's our X and Y. But it also says that we have a Y intercept of negative 72. So that point would be zero and negative 72. So we have another point. So I'm gonna call that also X and Y, although it's a different X and Y. So writing our beginning equation, we have y equals, we don't know the stretch, so it'll be a, we have a double root at 3, so it's going to be x minus 3, all squared, and because it says that it's cubic, we should have one more factor, and I don't know what that other factor is, because we don't know what the 0 is, so I'm going to call it x minus b. All right, now what I can do is I'm going to substitute the 2 and the negative 16 into my equation for x and y. Okay, so I get negative 16 equals 2 minus 3, all squared is 1. So it's going to be a times 2 minus b. All right, so that doesn't look so good, but I do have another point which I haven't used. So I'm going to use this point and substitute it again into this equation right here. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 72 equals to a, 0 minus 3 all squared and 0 minus b. So simplifying the right side, I'm going to have negative 3 squared, so it's 9, and then I have negative 9 times a, b. So I can actually simplify this to be 8 equals a, b, or now that I know that I have an equation here with a and b, I have another equation here with a and b, b is equal to 8 divided by a, and we're going to substitute it into this equation up here, so now I have negative 16 equals a times 2 minus 8 over a. So I'm going to distribute. So I get negative 16 equals 2a. And then a is cancel off, so I have minus 8. So add 8 to the side, I get negative 8 equals 2a. So a equals negative 4. And then b is equal to 8 from here. And divided by negative 4, so b equals negative 2. So therefore, I have an equation, y is equal to negative 4, so plugging it back into this equation in the box, times x minus 3, all squared, and then x plus 2. Don't forget to change the sign when you put the minus the negative 2. And then this is our equation. And this is how you can write uh, polynomial equations when you're given some information.